Uh, by line, wait, this is ready for you. Arabs told everyone. We're all aware that the uh, there were Luchos, Rishonos, and Luchos, Shneos. The first set of the commandments from Sinai, and the second set. First, was the, we, we read about this week's Parsha. Second set, we'll read about Parsha's Kitiso. Oh, the question is uh, there are a lot of questions that the Beforshim deal with. Uh, were they identical? In other words, uh, was the text? of the Lucha Shneos uh, completely identical with what it was in the Lucha Rishonos. So there are different opinions. One opinion is that it was identical. The problem with that opinion is that the text that appears in Chumash Dvorim in Parshas Vayatchanan about the uh, Aseris Advorim is not identical to the text that appears in this week's Parsha of Yitro and Chumashmot. One of the uh, main things that is pointed out is that uh, in uh, our Parsha in Yitro, it says, Zohor is Yom HaShabos Lakancho. And in Parsha Tchanan, it says, Shomor is Yom HaShavos Lakancha. And in the text itself, there are differences. So there's another opinion that says that the second Luchos were not identical to the first. And that the text of the first Luchos is what appears in this week's Parsha of Yitro, and the text of the second Luchos that Moshe brought down after he had shattered the first set is what was on the Luchos Shneos. And that would account for the difference in texts. Doesn't account for the reason why there should be a difference in text. That's a different matter that the Mephorshim discuss. So there is like uh, the uh, Ten Commandments before the Egil and the Ten Commandments after the Egil. And uh, are they identical or not? Also, we find in this week's Parsha that when the Jewish people uh, received Moshe's uh, uh, the Luchos that they're going to have the Torah and they heard it from Sinai. So the first uh, Luchos, they, at least the first two commandments they heard, so to speak, Aviochel from Hashem himself. Then they said they, we cannot withstand that level of holiness. 
and therefore Daber Ato, you you tell us the rest. Wow, in the second Luchos, uh, Moshe, it's all Moshe. There's no divine revelation to the Jewish people anymore because after they had committed the sin of the Maisa Egel, they were unable to restore themselves to the level that they were before the Maisa Egel. But uh, the, the parable for that is simple that if you have uh, Let's say uh, you have a beautiful marble table uh, that you purchased and uh, the uh, movers, uh, when they delivered it, uh, dropped it, cracked. So you hire the greatest craftsman in the world <clears throat> and he restores the table. He restores the table. Any stranger will not recognize that the table was once dropped and shattered and broken. He does such a masterful job. But you who own the table always know that that's not the original table. That table was broken and had to be restored. So the Meforshim say that's the idea of sin and of tshuva. Shuva restores the table, but the original crack still remains in the heart and mind and personality of the person that is never eradicated again. So uh, the, uh, We say in Shemot Esra on Shabbos uh, for Shacharis, Yismach Moshe b'mat nashelko, yevet neman korosolo, kuil tiferes b'rosho nasatolo, v'yomdo l'fonecha al har sinai, u'shnei luchos avonim hori v'yodo, v'chosu b'hem shmira Shabbos. So the Meforshim say that refers to the second Luchos. Because then it says, Vishom Rubna Israel is a Shabbos. Friday night we said, Zohar is Yom HaShabbos Lekadshah. So the second Luchos were different because of what happened in the interim. And the Mephorshim say we see that in the response of the Jewish people to the Luchos. But in our Parsha, in Parsha's Yisro, before uh, the Maiso Ego, so uh, the Jewish people said, Kol Hashem Diber Hashem Nas, whatever God says we'll do. They didn't say more than that. They didn't say Nasev and Ishma on the first Luchos. In Parshas Mishpotim, afterwards, there it says Nasev and Ishma. So the Mephorshim explained when Moshe came down from Sinai with the first Luchos. So the Jewish people, uh, there was no uh, Torah Shabbal Peh taught to them yet. Because when Moshe came down with the first Luchos that was at the Maiseo Ego, Moshe was up in heaven for 40 days to receive the Torah Shabbal Peh. But when he comes down, the Ego is there and they're dancing in front of the Ego. So he shatters the Luchos. So there never was a Torah Shabbat Peh for him to say anything about yet. Then, as the story continues in the Chumash, Moshe goes back up. Ulai achapra ba'adchem. 
maybe I will be able to bring a forgiveness for your sin. So he's there for 40 days to bring the kapora for Klav Yisrael. And then finally, he goes to receive the second set of luchos, another 40 days. Again, Torah Shabal Peh. This time he comes down and he teaches Torah Shabal Peh to Klav Yisrael. Teaches it first to Aaron and to the Kohanim, to his children, and then to the Sanhedrin, and then to the Nesim, and then to all the Jewish people. So on the first set of Luchos, they could only say Naseh because there was no Mishma yet. They never learned Torah Shabbat Peh yet. On the second set of Luchos, when Moshe came down and taught Torah Shabbat Peh, so then their response was Naseh Venishma. And in the word Venishma lies the mitzvah of Limud Torah. That we're always involved with Torah. The Torah is all consuming and all encompassing. And that our, con our connection to Torah is continual and all embracing. That's because of Torah Shabbat Peh. Torah Shabbat alone would not merit uh, such uh, a connection. It would not be able to engender such a connection. Because Torah Shabbat is the living Torah. It's the Torah that every human being adds to. Everyone has their own insight. Everyone has their own understanding. If it's merely a book of set laws, so then uh, there's little room for uh, human participation. And the Rebbe Rishonim intended that the Torah is always a partnership between God and the Jewish people. The sign is between me and you. You know that's how we. That's how we'll recognize each other. Through Limit Torah. That's our connection. So therefore, that's not seven Ishma. Nishma is that we will hear, we will understand, we will discuss, we will argue, we will have different opinions. And we'll be able to say, <clears throat> because of the connection to Torah, that Elu Elu that we can live with all of the different opinions. We have to know how to behave. That's one thing. We have to know the Nase is limited. You can't do it according to all of the opinions. But the Nishma is unlimited. All of the opinions are valid. All of them have insights. All of them have permanence. All of them are here to teach us something. And that's why there's a difference, these nuances of difference that appear in this week's Parsha, and that will appear in Parsha's Mishvotim, and that will appear later in Parsha's Vet Hanan, as to the Luchos, the Luchos themselves. Because I'll say, Luchos, Veshivrei Luchos, Munachim, Ba'orom. That the Aron Kodesh that the Levim carried, that the Kohanim brought, rather, it was carried by uh, the Bnei Kohos, but the uh, the Kohanim were responsible that uh, not only were there the two luchos that Moshe brought down whole, but even the shattered pieces of the first luchos were also there. 
So there are many uh, explanations as to what uh, the idea is behind that. But one of the ideas relevant to what I have discussed with you just a few moments ago is that the recognition that the first luchos were different than the second luchos. And that the difference occurred because of the ego. And therefore, what is important that the shivrei luchos the shattered pieces of the luchos should also exist in the Aron as a reminder as to what can happen. That at one minute, people can rise to the level and hear the voice of God himself. And after that, they can go out and sin and destroy and uh, there's no nothing happened. That's the human quality and the human greatness and the human weakness that is built into all of us. And therefore, in the discussion of the luchos themselves, the discussion of what was written, all of these things, the nuances are important because they teach us, they teach us exactly what the Rabboni Shalom wants us to have an insight into. So therefore, there's lo sachmod and lo sisave two different verbs. Before she explained that lo sachmod is, you shouldn't want something that you see that belongs to somebody else. Lo sisave is you shouldn't make yourself want things even that you don't see. It's a different level. So again, the nuance is important. And according to the Ramban, all of the Taryag mitzvahs are included in the Aseris Advarim. So by having an understanding of the Aseris Advarim, and by having an understanding of what is represented there, we come to an understanding of Torah generally, and of all of the mitzvahs of the Torah that are incumbent upon us. Rabbi Chananya ben Akash, Yomer, Rotz HaKodesh, Vorchu, Lezakos, Es Yisrael, Lefi Chalchir, Balahem, Torah, Mitzvot, Shenamar, Aranoi Chavet, Saman, Sitko, Yagdil, Tano, V'yadir. Ah, God,